Yeah, you're all fine. Yeah. Good to see you Dr. all. Also. Sorry. I think Dr. Talukdar has also joined. Yes, yes, I have joined. Thank you. Welcome, sir. Welcome to this uh, telecast. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, Mr. Talukdar. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Sanjay, sir. Sanjay, sir, can we start? Okay. Just a minute, just a minute. Yes. Getting my name meditated. Right. Okay.
I think uh, uh, from IOCL, if uh, many people have joined in this Google Meet, it's better that they watch over the YouTube in case they're not talking uh, during the meeting. So yeah, that we have conveyed. Uh, we're just waiting for one or two minutes, ma'am. Yeah, yeah, sure. That's okay. I mean, because I see a lot of, lot many people, you know, connected in this uh, Meet while we have very few speakers. So, because it will cause unnecessary disturbance during the meeting. Because somebody will be muting, unmuting, so that's so we have the option of watching it on YouTube. The link is already available with almost all of us, I guess. Okay. So that can be an option. Right. Yeah. Gaurav, you can please start now. Yeah, uh, ma'am, we're just waiting for our ID, sir. I think there's some. Okay, okay, go around. Sir, go ahead. Okay, sir. Thank you. Respected Mr. Sanjay Kumar V, Executive Director, Indian Oil Southeastern Region Pipelines, Dr. Nandani Salaria, IFS Curator, Indira Gandhi Zoological Park, Isaac. Our guest speaker for today, Dr. Bibab Kumar Talukta. Is CEO of Aranyak, Miss Devya, our education officer from Indira Gandhi Zoological Park, Vizag, senior officials from Pipelines Head Office, Southeastern Region Pipelines, and other pipeline regions of Indian Oil. I, Gaurav Jain, manager CSR SERP, welcome you all to this webinar on current conservation scenario of Greater One Horned Rhino in India on the occasion of World Rhino Day today. I would like to quote a famous naturalist. The only way to save a rhino is to save the environment in which it lives because there is a mutual dependency between it and millions of other species of both animals and plants. To enlighten us further on this thought, we are glad that we have today with us Dr. Nandani and Dr. Talukdar. We at Indian Oil are proud to support the cause of rhino conservation in India. We are also glad to partner with IGZP for this noble cause. With this background, I now request Mr. S. Patnayak, our Chief General Manager HR Indian Oil, for his opening remarks. Sir, over to you. Yes. Uh, thank you, Gaurav. Uh, today, on the 22nd September, uh, we are celebrating World uh, Rhino Day. In fact, the theme for this year is Five Rhino Species Forever. Uh, we at SCRPL are extremely glad to, uh, uh, to inform all those who have joined uh, through the telecast, through this telecast, that we have collaborated with Indira Gandhi Geological Park, uh, IGZP, located at Vishakapatnam, uh, for sharing their valuable experience and information about different kinds of rhino series uh, that are available uh, today. Uh, on this momentous day, we have amongst us uh, Mr. Sanjay Kumar, uh, Executive Director, Southeastern Region Pipeline, uh, Dr. Nandini Salaria, uh, IFS Curator, uh, Indira Gandhi um, uh, Geological Park, Vishakapatnam, Dr. Vibhak Kumar Talukda, Chief Executive Officer, Aranyak based at Guwahati. Uh, uh, and I take this opportunity to welcome all of you, sirs and ma'am, and also all the employees who have joined from Pipeline HO, uh, all the regions, and our employees from SCRPL. We at SCRPL have adopted uh, Rhino Nakul uh, based at uh, Vishakapatna, only one hound rhino um, uh, for three years. In fact, whenever we all go to Vishakhapatnam, including our AD sir, make it a point to visit uh, uh, our Nakul and meet uh, the Jew officials, including Dr. Nandini and uh, other senior officers. Uh, all of us are waiting to hear from Dr. Nandini, uh, the curator from uh, Indira Gandhi Ge Geological Park, and Dr. Uh, Talukda, more about the Indian rhinos. Uh, with this, I now uh, uh, request Gaurav to take the proceedings forward. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for enlightening us on today's uh, setting the tone of today's event. I now request uh, Curator Indra Zani Zuruzalik Park, Dr. Nandani Salaria, IFS, for her address, ma'am. Ma'am, over to you. So, good afternoon, everyone. First of all, greetings on uh, World Rhino Day. And I'm very excited uh, to see so many, you know, executives and uh, so many officials from IOCL, SERPL, 
so excited about this day and actively participating and showing so much interest in the conversation conservation issues uh, of uh, related to rhino especially the indian rhinoceros so it's a great great day i think and we are setting a great tone uh, to the con conservation of our indian rhino uh, first of all i would like to thank and welcome uh, mr sanjay kumar executive director serpl i mean the welcome is already done but still as a a curator of igzp i always am very delighted to meet sir whether it is online or offline so it's a great uh, you know a pleasure to meet sir and uh, be in conversation with him because he has shown great interest in uh, uh, you know collaborating with igzp and as mr patnaik said that we all they all make it a, a point that they visit igzp and meet nakul of course Our rhino uh, at IGZP, so which is a great thing, you know. It is uh, some people just adopt the animal and they forget about it, but it's a great thing that you always remember about the an uh, the animal and make it a point to see see him. And uh, also, you uh, you've been contributing through IOCL uh, by uh, the CSR uh, CER funding of around 1.8 crores, with through which we do we are doing a lot of works. and which are already almost grounded and uh, will be shown so soon showing you a lot of progress in that regard so thank you very much once again and uh, further without further much ado also i would like to welcome the, the mr talukdar uh, who has uh, you know accepted our invitation and uh, to enlighten everyone around here so thank you very much all iocl officials also who have gathered here with us today so it's a great thing Uh, so you know uh, if i have to talk about rhino conservation uh, well uh, we have started in around 1900s from a number around i think 70 to 75 uh, of the indian rhinoceros and today we have we are over 3500 so this is nothing but the con con conservation issue uh, conservation measures which has been taken by the government of india and various ngos Who, uh, who have supported actively, very very actively, in these conservation issues, to, uh, measures uh, which have been taken to conserve the species. So, I mean, today the Indian rhinoceros. If if we talk about all these as a theme stands that five rhino, five rhinos forever. So, amongst all these five rhinos as well, this is the most pre, uh, possibly the most prehistoric uh, species, because if you see the skin. it's almost uh, you know it's it's like a thick armor plate which resembles this uh, dinosaurus so we can see how prehistoric it feels like so uh, of course but it's not just the skin but it's the one horn of our indian rhinoceros which makes it you know very unique distinctive and also special from other uh, rhino species so um, further if i talk about its iocn status like the conservation status uh it is right now in vulnerable but it was uh, you know not uh, since 1986 it was in extinction almost near to extinction and it was kept in the status of endangered uh, as per iucn uh, because we had a lot of issues back then and a uh, lot of threats were there which were causing the decline in the population of rhinos mainly because of the habitat loss the hunting which had uh, which was very very predominant in uh, i think 1800s the late 1800s and the early 1900s where you know there was a trend amongst the royals where you they used to do sport hunting so this had caused a lot of uh, you know a decline in the population of our indian rhino and then of course the poaching as we all know poaching is such a big threat to our entire wildlife Uh, especially the indian wildlife and uh, you know it has been the important reason for the decline in the population and we all know that for the horn uh, for such a certain misconceptions and stupid myths i would say uh, the uh, these uh, this such a big beast i would say is being subjected to such a you know stupid act of uh, poaching for its horn so uh, that has been one of the major reason for uh, causing a decline in the population then of course the decline in the habitat the habitat loss this particular species is predominantly found in the alluvial plain grasslands near brahmaputra and all those areas but 
of course the human population is increasing our demands are much much more important our desires and requirements are much much more important than any other species i guess so that's why we've been encroaching upon every possible habitat of every possible species in this world and hence our these uh, you know poor species they end up losing their habitat and not only this they end up then straying into the human habitations which were actually originally their own home so then they end, end up in a situation where there is human wildlife conflict and hence they end up either getting injured or you know killed or some or there is a there is a development of animosity between the you know local people and uh, the for they develop a feeling of animosity against this species that you know it is in, encroaching into our area but however it was originally its habitat so yeah these are the factors mainly and of course these all have led to uh, the decline in the population of the species which you know had decreased but thanks to the efforts from government of india and the local state governments and the ngos not to mention you know very very active role of many ngos especially now like taluk uh, mr talukdar is also here wwf has also played an a very active role so all these ngos have played a very very great role in conservation of these species and uh, they have actively contributed in various ways and thus we could come out from an endangered status to the vulnerable status today so as i said earlier also it was a very small population back then in 18 uh, 19s 1900s and now we are at around more than 3500 but still you know the fight is not over we are still have to protect the species against all these threats and uh, possibly you know uh, we have to work with the locals which i am sure the governments are doing and we have to restore these landscapes to protect the species further we also have to reduce the illegal trade which again various agencies the government agencies and non government agencies are also working together to make it happen and of course the regular monitoring and census of the so we just started the just one year since we adopted the rhino as the mascot and then we started celebrating and then <coughs> forward i mean so we interact with our corporate management and then See what can be done for them. Sure. Ma'am, now we are online. Ma'am, shall uh, we shall start, ma'am? Are you sure we are online? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. All right. Start then. Yes, ma'am. Start from the introduction of Mr. Tarik. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Join join us today to speak on World Rhino Day on topic current conservation scenario. Greater one on rhino series is Sir Bihar Kumar. Sir is currently working. Sir is one of the founder of Aranyat in nineteen eighteen nineteen eighty nine, which is a premier NGO of any India, and currently currently the chief executive officer of Aranyat. He is also chair of Asian Rhino Specialist Group of International Union for Conservation, Conservation of Nature since 2008. He is also a senior advisor of International Rhino Foundation for Asian Rhinos since 2008. He has served as a member of Standing Committee of National Board of Wildlife during 2008 to 2010, and also the National Board of Wildlife. He is currently a member of State Board of Wildlife. Assam, an expert member of Assam State Biodiversity Board, sir will currently will speak on today on con current conservation scenario of Greater One on Rhino Cirrus in India. Over to you, sir, to please begin your talk. Thank you very much, and I take this opportunity to wish all of you a World Rhino Day. Uh, let me try to share my screen and show. Okay, I hope the screen is visible. Yes, sir, it is visible. Yeah, just, just, just alert me if you know. The, I'm just, you know, putting the next slide. Whether it is coming or not? Yes, sir, it is coming, sir. 
It's coming, okay? Yes, sir. Okay, that's fine. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. So anyway, let me start, you know, today's uh, talk about the current conservation scenario of greater one horned rhinoceros in India. Uh, so if we have five species of rhinos in the world, two species in Africa, three species in Asia. The African rhinos, both white and black rhinos are having two horns. The Asian rhinos, the greater one horn itself says it is one horn. The Javan rhino is also known as the lesser one horn. So that is also having one horn. But Sumatran rhino is having two horns. So, you know, generally, if we talk about two horns rhino, you know, our focus mainly goes to African species. But in Asia too, we have one species, the Sumatran rhino having two horns. So height-wise, if we see the greater one horn is the largest, followed by white rhino, black rhino, Javan rhino, and the Sumatran rhino. So now in our skin, you can see the white rhino populations. Uh, it, you know, in fact, now it has a little bit declined. It has come to 16,000 uh, because of heavy poaching in African continent. The countries are also reflected on the right side of this you know, slide. Uh, this is a picture of white rhino, and the countries are mentioned on the right, which are found in the wilderness of African continent. The next slide is basically, you know, I'm showing the black rhino. The black rhino population has increased compared to what it has been reflected here. It has almost, you know, now 5,990, close to 6,000. And these are the countries where the black rhinos are found. So white and black rhinos are quite popular. And that's a common mistake I have seen even in India. You know, most of the rhino posters that has been made over the years, you know, are they are putting the African rhinos instead of the greater one horn rhinos. So I think that is why this awareness are very much essential that we have five species and the greater one horn rhinos looks different. And if we are promoting greater one horn rhinos, I, I hope, I'm sure that, you know, we need to put the images of the greater one horn rhino. This is the picture of the Javan rhino, which looks similar to the greater one horn rhino, but habitat wise, they are different. They are basically living in dense forests of Southeast Asia, um, currently only restricted in one national park in Western Java in Indonesia, and its population is 76. It's marginally increased compared to what it was probably 15 years ago. And they are browsers. Our rhinos, the greater one horn rhinos are grazers, but the uh, Javan rhinos and Sumatran rhinos are browsers. So Sumatran rhino also population wise, it has further declined over the years. This is a species which I am quite worried about. Maybe if, you know, proper time bound actions are not initiated, this species may go extinct probably during our lifetime. They have their own challenges and you can see the, in the species are little bit hairy and smaller and they have two horns. These two horns are smaller here, but I have also seen the bigger Sumatran rhino, you know, in the wild. Now coming to the greater one horn rhino, you know, we have 4,014 in India and Nepal, and its population has increased. Till 2008, IUCN enlisted the greater one horn rhino as endangered. However, in 2008 red list assessment, I was part of, you know, that assessment being the chair of the Asian Rhino Specialist Group. The, our team found that, you know, the overall improvement in the status of greater one horn rhino, and it, 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 it cannot be put, you know, in endangered categories based on the standard red list criteria. So ultimately, it has been downgraded to vulnerable. Now, that word downgraded means a little bit negative. But in fact, in conservation scenario, it's a positive news. If we can downgrade a species, that reflects that the government efforts were successful. It is not negative in that sense. Okay, so you know when it was declared as a vulnerable from endangered to vulnerable, a lot of government officials, you know, uh, call me up. You know why why this has been down downgraded? You know it, it may it may impact overall conservation. Then I said no. You know this reflects the proactive actions being taken by the governments in the ranch countries, and that is why there are improvement on the status. 
And since 2008, the effort from the governments are still on. And that is the reason why the greater one horn rhinos are increasing both in India and in Nepal. So if we see the population wise, you know, the Kaziranga National Park during 1980s, we had about 1,000 rhinos. In 2022, we had estimations in, in the month of March. It has increased to 2,000, you know, uh, 400. It, it has, in, in fact, in 2002, this is a, the wrong figure I have put it here. It should have been 2,613. Okay, so it has increased over the years in, 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 in Assam or in, even in West Bengal or even in, 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 in Nepal situations. Now, I, I would like to highlight, you know, if you can see the Manas population and Laokhwa population, fourth and fifth from the top, you can see question marks during 2000. That means we lost all the rhinos from these two wildlife, two national parks or the rhino bearing areas of Assam, mainly due to prolonged socio-political unrest. When I say prolonged socio-political unrest, that means unrest is not for a week or for a month. It is for years. And that has impacted our rhino conservation effort. And we lost rhinos from Laokhwa during 1980s. And we lost all the rhinos from Manas National Park during 1990s. However, later on, you know, as the situation has improved from 2009 onwards, uh, Assam governments under the Indian Rhino Vision 2020 has started, you know, capturing rhinos from Pobitora and Kaziranga and release it to Manas National Park. And now you can see the population has reached to 40. Now, if you can come down, you know, towards, uh, towards the bottom, um, the Chitwan National Park in, in Nepal and Bordia National Park, you can see the population increased in 2000 to 544 and 104. And then around 2009, you can see a decline, you know, from 544 to 435 and Bordia from 104 to 20. Again, the reason is same. The reason why the sharp decline was again because of socio-political unrest in that country. And that, you know, so these, the India, the Assams, you know, we have two such bad phases where we lost rhinos from two rhino bearing areas. Nepal suffered, you know, the rhino, rhino you know, populations during the socio-political unrest. So there is a link between prolonged socio-political unrest and increase in rhino poaching. Because during the socio-political unrest, the other enforcement agencies' main priority is to maintain law and order. And our forest officials or forest you know, staff are not that much equipped to protect rhinos. And that is the time where you know, the, the well-organized rhino horn smugglers are active and they take full advantages. So that's a lesson learned that has to be you know, kept in mind in future. If another socio-political unrest erupts for a longer period, I think our enforcement agencies has to be extra cautious. So currently, the rhinos are mainly found in Nepal. In India, we have a small population in Dudhua in Uttar Pradesh. We have two populations in, in West Bengal, Jallapara and Gurumara, and four existing population in Assam. Now, why rhinos are threatened? Rhinos are mainly killed because of its horn. Because there are beliefs in some of the countries, in you know, Asian countries, that rhino horns can cure you know, different diseases, it can give strength. So these are all assumptions without any scientific base. And because of you know, these kind of assumptions, rhinos are being killed in India and in Africa. Of late in Vietnam, you know, has emerged as one of the major uh, you know, buyers of you know, the rhino horns, mainly from South Africa. Uh, and that's why the market has been growing in that country because people are getting rich in Vietnam due to the economic development. And, and whenever you know, people get rich, some people get confused where to invest. You know, so sometimes uh, you know, keeping a rhino horns or you know, drinking, uh, drinking the powder rhino horns with their drinks you know, shows some sort of a, you know, economic status of those persons. So that is why the, there has been increase in rhino poaching uh, you know, cases during 2010 till now, but compared to the other African countries, India and Nepal are doing much better in protecting the greater one horn rhinos in, in the respective country. Now, if we see the African situations, 
you know, during 2013 till 2017, you can see Africa lost over 1,000 rhinos per year due to poaching. 1,000 rhinos due to poaching means in a year, three days, three rhinos per day being poached in Africa. And some of those African countries, including South Africa, they were the, you know, the major sufferer because of these organized gangs operating and killing their rhinos. And, and national parks like Kruger National Parks, they have four helicopters for protection. But despite having four helicopters, they could not protect you know, their rhinos uh, because this is an organized gang of poachers. Sometimes, you know, the transboundary uh, illegal syndicates plays important role. And in, in the case of, you know, South Africa, the, the modus operandi that the organized gang of poachers adopted, that along the border, you know, because South Africa is having border with Mozambique, along the border in single night, they put six, you know, six to ten different poaching, you know, po uh, po poachers group. And they enter and they kill rhinos. So what happens generally whenever a situation, you know, something happens in one place, all the enforcement agencies, the staff goes there. And then the nine poach, poach, you know, poachers group can do their works, you know, very silently in other parts. So that's a modus operandi that has really shattered, you know, the South African rhino population. And that is one of the reasons why the white rhino population has declined from about 21,000 to close to 16,000 now. I hope this kind of poaching pressure doesn't come to Asia, where we have smaller population. Sumatran rhinos is having less than 60. Javan rhinos are having less than 76. So our populations are small. In South Africa, populations was bigger. So they can still witness this sharp decline for some extent. If they can you know, reduce it, if you can see from the graphs compared to 2015-16 last year or in 2020, they could reduce this by half. Uh, so effort is on, uh, but but for India and Nepal, we have to be extra careful. And Vietnam has become a, 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 a you know a point for buying these illegal products, um, because there are buyers, you know the demands are there, and now the international organizations are creating uh, demand reductions awareness in countries like Vietnam and also in China. But then, you know, the greatest irony is that these countries may not have rhinos. They may not have the emotional attachment as we may have. So that is a challenge, challenging situation. So for us, for India and Nepal, or for that matter, the other rhino ranch countries, we have to enhance, you know, our protections, our vigil, awareness among our, our, our people, our communities, so that no one, you know, gives any shelters to the culprits involved in killing our rhinos for its horn illegally. If we see the poaching, you know, the rhino poaching scenarios in Assam, during 1980s, poaching was quite high. You know, if we see average, it was more than 40. But then the effort has increased, and that is the time when awareness has increased, the medias are playing, you know, good roles, the NGOs are emerging, supporting and complementing the efforts of the government. And we can see the decline, you know, of rhino poaching. Uh, during during 2000. But then again in 2013, the rhino poaching suddenly increased to 41 in Assam. And that is the time a lot of, you know, pressures were being put on this on the government to act. The Guwahati High Court has itself taken rhino poaching case as a suomoto public interest litigation, directing, you know, the Assam government to further strengthen, you know, the vigil and the protection system to reduce rhino poaching. And since then, Assam government has taken some progressive steps. Kaziranga's manpower has been doubled compared to what it was in 2012. The overall protection, you know, efficacy has been improved. The Assam, you know, police has engaged a special task force to check rhino poaching. And you can see the results. Last year, there was only one poaching. I think that's a good, uh, you know, progress being made by, by the Assam government. Uh, and I, I always feel for, for these, you know, wireless species which are in Schedule 1, which are having illegal demands, government has to lead. Government has to govern. And you can see when government actually leads proactively, it also gets very good support from the communities. And that is the, you know, situations which we are fortunate to see in Assam. 
um, we hope that you know the this declining trend can be maintained uh, so that you know our rhino populations can be in, can be enhanced again now why rhino protection bothers us because it impacts the rhino population for small population it may shatter the male female ratio that could ultimately also impact on the population built up it also impacts the morale of frontline forest guard the forest guard working in rhino bearing areas works 24 7. they may not get puja holidays they may not get you know new year holidays they do they does you know they are in, engaged with protections almost every day but then whenever poaching happens you know these are the frontline forest guards you know they are being criticized so maybe out of 365 days 364 days they are successful in protecting rhinos no one from our society generally congratulate this frontline forest guard maybe the 365th day one poaching took place and all of us we start blaming so it impacts the morale of the forest you know the frontline forest guard it also impacts the overall conservation if rhino poaching happens too often and then it adds extra pressure on the police but of late the investigations being done in assam by you know the law enforcement agencies it has found some direct link that is also you know impacting our national security because there are some incidences the enforcement agencies has got that rhino horns are traded in exchange of illegal arms so if illegal arms comes in lieu of rhino horns that is going to destabilize the nation and that is where we have also you know are now trying to emphasize that the rhino protection is not should not be the only responsibility of forest and wildlife stuff it has to be seen from a wider perspective from national security point of view in assam we have seen earlier the rhinos are killed by handmade guns but of late the rhinos are killed by automatic guns and these automatic guns are not easily accessible to our so-called village level poachers it is accessible to well-trained smugglers so that is where you know the the rhino poaching scenarios has changed compared to 1980s to 1990s and in and of late you know in from 2010 onwards nowhere rhinos are safe or its derivatives rhino horns were stolen from european museums during 2000 you know 10 to 2015 over 80 rhino horns were stolen from european museums when we talk about europe we generally feel that they have the you know stringent protection system or vigilance system yes they do have but despite having those you know stringent protection systems the this international gang of wireless smugglers can still can you know take out those rhino horns from the museums so nowhere rhinos or the horns are safe what we are doing as an ngo we are working very closely with the forest department we are trying to find out the gaps where we can complement and we found that the, the scene of crime investigations earlier was very limited. So we, in 2011, we first introduced a Belgian Malinois sniffer dog. And currently we have seven, which has been you know, put in four rhino bearing, bearing areas of some, assisting the forest and police officers. And the introductions of you know, well-trained dogs has led to the arrest of more than 60, 70 poachers or suspects in past 10 years in rhino bearing areas though the dog has given some vital clues from the scene of crime because of its capacity to sniff it has identified you know through which route the poachers may have come out or took shelter somewhere and that has led to the arrest or of the suspects by police and forest officers what we are also doing in assam there are village defense parties they work closely with the police they report to the police but they also work with the wildlife for you know department but sometimes they do not have the basic necessities like the raincoats or the torches or the shoes so those are the gears field gears we provide but then when we provide we engage the parent department the police and forest of forest department you know so that you know we don't want to give an impressions that we have come from somewhere and giving this and police and forest department is doing nothing no 
we always take police and forest department together whenever we you know, distribute these field gears and we tell the recipient that it is because of the police and forest officials you are getting this small gift from us so that further binds you know the networking that further binds the goodwill and that further binds the partnership to work and complement each other the village level awareness are very important both in formal informal ways we are also having some programs like rhino goes to school where you know we put uh, some rhino dress or the skulls you know to make the students aware of why we need to conserve the rhinos now while the poaching has been regarded as a greatest threat yes but it has reduced now to one the other greatest you know uh, threat which is hidden we may not feel it is that invasive plant species that slowly engulfing the key grassland habitats of rhino bearing areas in india and also in nepal so that is a one aspect you know we really need to look at i have also been you know uh, working with the forest department of assam uh, so that you know these invasive species can be biologically controlled uh, some steps has already been taken but it has to be intensified you know as the rhino populations are growing we have to improve the habitat so that we can accommodate them within the national parks to reduce the rhino and human conflict outside the rhino bearing areas flood again is a natural you know uh, process in the flat plain ecosystems annual floods i feel is always essential because it energizes the wetland ecosystems but sometimes you may get you know in media hype that you know they will portray in a such a way that you know all the rhinos are down and all the animals has been down and everything will die no for flood plain ecosystems annual flood is very essential we lose the animals which are weak so that supports the survival of the fittest theory that means we only have the fittest animals survives in these challenging situations and from those fittest animal we get you know better offspring so that are ecological things we also need to think you know during the decision making process so we had situation like we had you know rhinos but we lost rhinos because of the poaching during the socio political unrest but land remains At, as long as land remains we have future if land goes along with the rhinos there is no second innings but in our case we have land both manas and laukwa and the process has started since 2008 under the indian rhino vision 2020 rhinos were captured from povitara wildlife sanctuary and kaziranga national park and released you know in manas national park so so far 22 rhinos were captured from povitara and kaziranga national park and released in manas manas national park and as i mentioned earlier the current population is about 40 now why we are doing this we are doing this for our children we have to you know make this art so that these children can see the rhinos the forest the wilderness the way we have seen so we have to do justice for this for these kids so awareness are very essential you know creating awareness among students because you know creating awareness among students has some other cascading effect because student will tell this to their parents to their relatives so it has cascading effect so we are working very closely with the with the school authorities around rhino bearing areas to build you know the necessary knowledge base and also love for wildlife and rhinos we are engaging students in collaboration with the respective rhino bearing areas so some students are we are having like a day long program we take them to the national parks wildlife sanctuaries the irony is that the students living near rhino bearing areas haven't seen rhinos in in the national park at least 70 80% of the students so we take them you know to the national park in small groups uh, in collaboration with the park authorities and the jeep safari associations uh, so that you know we can motivate them we have also started workshop with the police department because police can play an important role and why we are doing this workshop the legal orientation workshop you know to prevent wildlife crime with police because the illegal arms and these suspects comes from civil areas they don't hide themselves in the national parks for 365 days a year so that is why police awareness among police are very important and we are very fortunate to get very proactive support from the police we have done almost like 10 district level workshops where 
the officer in charge of all police stations, the deputy uh, superintendent of the police, the head of police of the district attends this workshop and we build a network. So whenever they, you know, uh, make seizures of some animals and they cannot identify through WhatsApp, you know, they also seek our support or the support of the forest officials. So in that way, you know, a network has been created. We are now also working with other parliamentary forces like SSB, ITBP, CISF. We just recently did, you know, two workshops in Guwahati High Court, especially with the officials who are engaged with extremism. And after that workshop, we have found at least five seizures by the people, by the officials engaged in the extremism. So small interventions, good outcome. So that's something we are trying to, you know, find out and complement the government authorities uh, as an NGO to enhance protections, to increase vigils, and to reduce wildlife crime. The third, after enforcement agencies, the main, you know, uh, stakeholders through which we can anticipate better conviction rate is judiciary. So we have started workshops with judiciaries, including the you know, high court judges, the bar associations, and we are now working very closely with the Assam State Legal Service Authority. Uh, and we have conducted at least four workshops bringing you know, high court judges, the district level judges, police, forest officials, SSBs, and, and give a platform to interact, you know, where the enforcement agencies are finding it difficult to secure convictions. Then the legal experts provide the necessary suggestions. In fact, the next Monday, 26th of this month, we are having a workshop in Manipur, in Imphal, uh, because that is a, one of the, you know, the transit route of wildlife uh, products, uh, both going to Myanmar and from Myanmar side also coming into India. So Assam government in, in, in 2021, wall and rhino day, that means about one year ago, has burned down about 2,400 pieces of rhino horns to send a strong signal that rhino horn doesn't have value. It has value as long as the rhino horn is intact in the living rhinos. So in that way, Assam government also tried to send a message you know, to the people of Assam and also to the smugglers that, you know, the Assam government is not dependent on rhino horns, you know, to be sold in order to raise money because it is illegal as per CITES, as per Wildlife Protection Act. So I think that is a good, pro you know, progressive decisions the government has taken. A lot of people ask me whether it is good or bad. I always say it is good. Rather than these rhino horns, you know, falling into the wrong hands, it is better that we burn it and, you know, send a strong signal. Now, the Assam is strengthening its, its protection measures. You know, there is also a special rhino uh, protection force being created where even the women are also engaged. Uh, the, the lower picture is just I, uh, the day before yesterday. This a special protection force has been trained in Guwahati. So to combat wildlife crime, because this is the fourth largest illegal trade in the world, the enforcement agencies, especially the forest guards, needs sophisticated weapons in order to fight back. And that is where I thank Assam government for taking progressive measures to provide them the needed equipments to fight back. And we have already seen the results, as I have mentioned, that the rhino poaching could be reduced to one last year. So thank you very much for your uh, kind attentions. If you have any queries or any questions, I can try to answer. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, uh, for a brief information. It is quite interesting uh, to know about the rhino and its uh, current poaching and other awareness activities undertaken for rhino conservation. Moving on to the questions asked from the viewers presentation. So the first question is, what are the conservation efforts and the conservation uh, strategy launched to conserve one on rhinoceros? Okay, I think different different states have different approach, but the core core issue is to protect rhinos, for which you know the frontline forest gas capacity has to be built, and in India it has been built already. Uh, second is the habitat management because habitat get changes over the time, uh, for which the annual patch grassland burning has been practiced. Why the grassland burning is important annually? is to maintain grassland as grassland. If the grasslands are not managed, grassland is likely to 
you know, convert to woodland as part of the normal succession. So in that process, of course, there are some negative effects, but since the rhino conservation is the priority, you know, somewhere some sort of adjustment has to be made. In case of India, our you know main protection force in the for rhinos are the forest guard, are the front, you know frontline forest guard. In Nepal, however, their protections are run by Nepalese army. So you know, so in in that way also you know it is been you know a, a stringent process. Uh, so and then awareness is another area, uh, and now the rhino ranch expansion within the state. Because you know the rhinos are are increasing in especially in Assam, even in West Bengal also they thought of creating a third you know rhino bearing areas. So the rhino race expansion is also a priority for the current rhino bearing in the provinces of Assam and also for for uh, the rhino bearing provinces of India and also for Nepal. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, moving on to the second question. Is there any greatest threat other than poaching and its habitat? Uh, well, I think poaching is definitely will always remain a threat as long as the demands exist in the user countries like China and Vietnam. Uh, so for which, you know, the protection has to be enhanced, intelligence has to be maintained. Uh, then, of course, you know, the habitat management is important, which I highlighted. The third, which is important, is to periodically check whether anthrax or other diseases are, are occurring. So disease can also, you know, quickly wipe out the population. So those are the three aspects I feel, you know, the, the continued attentions are very much important. Uh, thank you, sir, for answering. Uh, moving on to the third question. Uh, how to save our rhinos using any other sustainable methods or how we can protect from extinction, sir? Well, I think, you know, through, through, through protections that has been already been given to rhinos and their habitat, management of habitat, rhino habitat, you know, which are existing. And I think that India and Nepal has a long history of conserving rhinos. In 1905, only a dozen rhino was believed to be alive in Kajiranga National Park in 1905. And now it has increased to almost 2,600. You know, so I think India and, and the Nepal has legacy of leading rhino conservation and can always claim a success story for its continued effort. I think that, that continuity needs to go on. Thank you, sir. Moving on to the third question. Can rhinos uh, can be shifted to other forests in India? It depends as long as that forest is having grassland habitats. If the habitat, habitat supports you know, the survival of rhinos, number one, one is habitat. And second, whether the protection is there. Because whenever there is a rhino, you know, protection has to be 24-7. So if those two can be, you know, ensured, it is possible. Of course, sometimes, you know, transferring rhinos from one state to another may, may be a political issue. But it is possible as long as habitat supports and protections can be ensured. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for answering for all answers uh, such a patiently. Uh, moving on to the next session, now I would like to welcome Sri Sanjay Kumar, Executive Director, Southeastern Regions Pipeline, IOCO. A brief introduction about sir. Sir is presently heading Southeastern Region Pipelines of Indian Oil and overseeing vast network of petroleum pipelines. Over to you, sir, to please share your thoughts on this occasion. Thank you, Devia. For my audible. Yes, sir. Uh, <clears throat> respected Dr. Nandini Salavia, IFS Curator IGZP uh, Vizag, Dr. Vibhav uh, Kumar Talukdar, Chief Executive Officer RNEC, Ms. Devia, Ed Education Officer uh, IGZP, my team members from Indian Oil who have joined from all across the country. Uh, we are very thankful uh, for the association of uh, Indira Gandhi's Zoological Park, Vizag, and uh, Arinyak uh, on this day, uh, the World Rhino Day. Uh, at Indian Oil, we firmly believe that it is possible to fuel the energy needs of the nation while also protecting people and the environment. 
Uh, we have been undertaking variety of activities towards ensuring environmental sustainability, ecological balance and animal welfare. Last week itself on September 17th, we all have seen the cheetah reintroduction project at Kuno National Park in Madhya Pradesh uh, by the Prime Minister of India, uh, which is fueled by Indian Oil under its corporate social responsibility. The 62nd Indian Oil Day last year on 1st September 2021 witnessed the historic launch of Indian Oil's new brand, the mascot, Indian Oil Rhino, by our chairman, Indian Oil. The new mascot sports striking similarities with the brand Indian Oil, which is a super brand in terms of features such as big, strong and majestic. The new mascot turned out to be true head turner and showstopper as within hours of its launch, Indian Oil mascot emerged as the top trend on Twitter in India last year. Choosing brand mascot uh, last year was a step to reinvent and revitalize the image of a 62 year old brand Indian Oil. The great uh, the greater Indian single horn uh, rhino's identity is rooted in its Indianness, which makes it the perfect storyteller for brand Indian oil. This rhino is also a critical cog in the ecology to which it belongs, and its continued well being is crucial for the sustenance of the ecological chain. Again, there lies its connection with Indian oil's presence in Indian, uh, the Indian energy landscape. The rhino connects Indian oil to the rich energy legacy that Indian oil has been interested with, after all. It represents the oldest Indian refinery at Digboy, from where the story of the oil industry in India began. Southeast region pipelines has adopted Rhino Nakul, the only one horn rhino at uh, Indira Gandhi's Zoological Park, Vizag, for three years. We're also contributing towards major developmental works in the Vizag Zoo. Um, uh, in fact, we are very thankful to Dr. Saleria for uh, all the cooperation and guiding us for. Uh, carrying out these activities and I'm sure uh, we'll uh, collaborate more in future as well uh, in more uh, such developmental activities. In fact, Indian Oil has been contributing towards rhino nourishment in many uh, zoological parks in the country, namely Gauhati, Delhi, Hyderabad, Patna, etc. Uh, we hope that the Indian Oil rhino will also go a long way to revitalize the brand Indian Oil and add more warmth and freshness to Indian Oil's market identity. In fact, uh, I'm very thankful to um, Dr. Talukdar for uh, an enlight enlightening uh, presentation for people like us who otherwise uh, just know about the rhino that we see in the zoo, nothing beyond that. Uh, I think it was a very uh, enriching uh, presentation. And uh, I, I hope that uh, um, Indian Oil will be able to do something towards conservation maybe we'll get in touch with you and then discuss it internally with our management and see what uh, more, more can be done in the coming days uh, thank you dr talibdar and thank you dr saleria and thank you uh, my crpl team uh, including the vizac team which has coordinated for this activity uh, thank you everyone for uh, being with us today and uh, reaping the benefits of uh, this webinar Thank you once again. All the best. Thank you, sir, for sharing your vast thoughts on this occasion. We are happy to hear from your side. So before we end up the session, let's have a look on our Nakul, the most chubby boy of IGZP. Okay. So we have, we have a video. Let's have a look on it.
నేను ఇందిరా గాంధీ జువలాజికల్ పార్క్లో యానిమల్ కీపర్గా చేస్తున్నాను ఈ ఇండియన్ రైను మార్నింగ్ రాగాలే కేర్ఫుల్గా మొత్తం డేకరాలు అంతా చెక్ చేసి డేకరాలు వదలడం జరుగుతుంది నైట్ కరాలు మొత్తం శుభ్రం చేసి మంచి వాటర్ పెట్టి టెన్ థర్టీకి లెవెన్ లోపు కేటల ఫీడ్ వస్తుంది కేటల ఫీడ్ పెట్టి దాన్ని మళ్ళీ డేకరాలు వదిలి మొత్తం దానికి గడ్డి కానీ ఆహారం మొత్తం కూడా సప్లై చేయడం జరుగుతుంది అలాగే వెటనరీ డిపార్ట్మెంట్ నుండి డాక్టర్ గారు డైరీ వచ్చి చెకప్ చేయడం జరుగుతుంది అలాగే కీపర్ డైరీ రాసి ఆఫీస్కి పంపితే మేడం గారు కూడా కీపర్ డైరీ వెరిఫై చేసి యానిమల్ ఎలా ఉందని కూడా ప్రొవేషన్లో పెడుతుంటారు ఎండాకాలంలో దీనికి అన్ని ఫెసిలిటీలు కూడా చేస్తుంటాం దాన్ని బురద గుంటలో పెట్టడం కోసం బురద ఉండి ఒకటి తయారు చేసి అన్ని వేసాకాలంలో అంతా అందులో ఉన్నట్టు మేము డివిజన్ చేసి అందరూ వదులుతుంటాం డైలీ కూడా నైట్ పూట దాన్ని ఫీడ్ చేసి మళ్ళీ నైట్ కాలంలో బంద్ చేస్తాం అదృష్టం అనుకుంటున్నాను జూలో చేయడం నేను మేము కూడా జూ అనే ఇష్టంతో దీని దగ్గర కంటిన్యూగా టెన్ ఇయర్స్ నేను చేస్తున్నాను so hope everyone of you all enjoyed our uh, nakul video so he is one of a chubby boy and major attraction for igzp so with this we conclude the session now moving on to the vote of thanks i would like to express my gratitude to all esteemed delegates of the webinar for their presence we specially thank our today's speaker dr bivap kumar chief executive officer of arnai i extend my heartfelt thanks to dr nandini saveri ifs curator of igzp Vishakhapatnam for the continuous support for the webinar to happen. A special thanks to Shri Sanjay Kumar, Executive Director, Southeastern Region Pipelines, Mr. Shri Patnaik and all other senior officials of Southeastern Region Pipelines for the continual support and collaboration. Thank you all for joining the webinar. Have a good day. Yeah, uh, ma'am, before yes. we break, uh, Uh, we are really really thankful to nadani ma'am for making this happen today and uh, dr talukdar for enlightening us and uh, we can see that after the video you played the video we can see smiles on all the faces so really thanks once again ma'am and we understand that our isaac team is already there at the zoo for live celebrations mm -hmm. so uh, we thank them also uh, dr mr gv satyanarayan gmcgd and mr t vidya sagar our construction chief construction manager over there uh, for the efforts behind this uh, lizing with indira gandhi zoological park and making this possible today thank you thank you everyone thank you very much thank you thank you very much thank you ma'am thank, thank, thank you sir thank you dr talukdar thank you thank you very much good day